Remember. Remember the child you used to be. Remember how you discovered the world, experienced it, with what ease, curiosity, and joy you perceived it. How each moment sparked magic for you, and how you forgot everything around you whilst playing. How connected you felt with nature. And life, how alert your senses were when you discovered this life, and how free you were. Remember your dreams, the places you longed to discover, the paths to get there, and the companions who were by your side on these journeys, the ones who helped you become the person you are today. Remember. I must have been nine or ten years old when I stood in front of that glowing billboard in the grey evening dreariness of my hometown and looked at this breathtakingly beautiful white landscape with a wooden bench. I was a rather serious but enormously imaginative child who often got lost in daydreams. Then I simply forgot about the world around me. Just like that evening, when this landscape attracted me so magically that I made a decision and knew deep in my heart, one day I would sit on this bench and gaze out into the distance across this enchanting purple land bathed in warm sunlight. The colors, the vastness and the rolling hills fascinated me and immediately aroused a longing to be right there at this place. I just had to find it. And I already knew who would help me with that. My grandpa, the one person in my life who knew everything and could make the impossible possible. He could also find unknown beautiful places with me. And I was right. Even if my grandfather didn't know exactly where the place with the bench was, he immediately recognized the area where it must be, from the vastness and purple tones of the landscape. I remember that he smiled mischievously and said to me, Let's explore a landscape that is so beautiful that you will never forget it. There we will definitely find the place with the bench. He spoke of the Lüneburg Heath. And so we made a plan. We would drive to the heath and find the place with the bench, whatever the cost. We were united in this desire and also with special bracelets and the color of blooming heather bushes. We were friends, adventure partners and allies in the dream of sitting together on that bench in the sunlight and marveling at the endless expanse, colors and beauty of the heath. And so it began, our journey to the Purple Land.
we started our adventure on a warm summer morning in the middle of the Lüneburg Heath. Equipped with a lot of anticipation for our discovery tour, we made our way to our first stop, where we suspected the unknown place with a bench. The famous Heath Garden. There, Grandpa told me, was not only a lot to explore, but also a lot to learn about the variety of heather plants. And there should also be some spots with panoramic views. We would surely find the place with the bench there. We met a gardener who was tending one of the colorful flower beds. Close your eyes and just let this wonderful scent work on you, Grandpa said. What do you smell? I concentrated completely on the scent that entered my nose. Oh, I blurted out and looked at Grandpa. He smiled even wider, nodded and said, good, huh? That's the scent of the purple land? I looked at Grandpa. But before he could answer, the gardener said, Oh yes, and there are so many other scents, because we have a particularly rich biodiversity here in the heath. And once a year, it even smells like smoke. Do you want to know why? Now I was curious. And then the gardener told us about the heath burning. She explained that such a fire in terms of a very controlled and very limited burning of the old bushes is only necessary in heather areas that have already completely dried up. The burning only happens during winter and in order to help the heather grow through the nutrient-rich ash. Fascinating! She told us exactly how it worked and that this periodic burning is even quite useful to rejuvenate the heather bushes making them younger, she called it, that it could give them the power to develop an even more richer bloom. And it is one of the most natural and oldest ways of tending the heath, so that flora and fauna have adapted very well over time. I was completely captivated by the gardener's stories. And while I was still holding a few twigs in my hand, and imagining the many plants and animals of the heath, I realized with a jolt, our mission, the reason for our being here. We were looking for the place with the bench in front of the beautiful white landscape. And if not a real gardener, then who could help us find it? I was wrong. This friendly woman had shown us the fascinating sense of the heath but unfortunately, she didn't know our place with the bench. I was a bit disappointed, but Grandpa seemed confident. And so we went on with all these exciting new impressions. I kept discovering new impressive landscapes and special spots of the heath with Grandpa and lots of benches, even if ours wasn't among them. Yet, how stunningly beautiful it was here. When we reached the next village, the smell of freshly baked bread suddenly wafted towards us. Grandpa discovered a bakery a few meters away, stopped at an advertising board in front of it and said, Juniper bread, uh-huh. Moments later, a man with a large basket on his shoulder came from the bakery courtyard and almost ran into us. He laughed and greeted us warmly. Oops, young lady, I almost knocked you over in front of my own bakery. Excuse me, may I give you something to try? I put a piece of bread straight into my mouth and immediately tasted something completely new and somehow it resembled what I had already smelled in the Heath Garden. This is real heather bread with juniper that I just baked. 
and I'm now taking to a customer. I hope you like it. There's a lot of love in it. And while we ate, the baker told us how he made that bread. I listened spellbound and really liked what I was chewing. The baker noticed that too, pulled out a paper bag from his basket, put bread in it and handed it to us. Such a nice person. Grandpa said with a smile, now we have something delicious for our picnic. I also showed the baker a photo of our place with the bench. Apparently he got around so much due to his work, so he certainly knew his way around. But unfortunately, he didn't know where to find our bench either. The baker waved us goodbye before we continued on our way through the purple land. The path led us right into a beautiful landscape covered with tall bushes and shrubs. Grandpa told me how he explored this area near a very idyllic juniper forest with his father when he was a kid. He talked about the many little adventures back then, how he was fascinated by the many colors, the vastness and the late summer lilac of the heath. His eyes really lit up when he remembered a special memory. I was so fascinated by bees and I still am to this day and of course in what they produce. Suddenly he started giggling as we saw a man with a very funny hat standing by a row of beehives a few yards away and Grandpa still smiling called out what a coincidence there we have some of my favorite little animals. And so we got to know a real beekeeper and his work. Before you put the spoon in your mouth, close your eyes again and then truly enjoy what you taste, Grandpa advised me. And so I did, just like him. Wow, that was extremely delicious. I never tasted anything like this in my entire life. It was as if the pretty heath bloom had turned into this creamy, sweet, almost jelly-like consistency which landed on my tongue. While we were eating the honey, the beekeeper started telling me about the heather bees, how busy they were and how they collected the honey. He even showed us the queen bee who seemed to be very tame, a little bigger than any other of her colony and just sat on his finger. I was absolutely immersed in this taste experience. And in the words of the beekeeper, which painted pictures of busy buzzing bees on purple heather blossoms. As a farewell gift, the beekeeper gave us a jar of his bees delicious honey which Grandpa put in his backpack right next to the fresh bread. Now I could no longer hide my impatience and disappointment. We reached a small village, the center of which consisted of winding paths and enchanting houses and gardens. It all looked like oversized charming dollhouses and also seemed to be an important point on the many hiking trails in the Lüneburg Heath. As we were walking through a newer residential area, suddenly there was a man sitting on a corner with a basket on his lap. When he noticed us, he greeted us warmly and showed us what was in the basket. It were juniper berries. 
He invited us to tour his little distillery at the back of the house. I saw some cauldron-like machines that shimmered really nicely in the light. We learned from the friendly gentleman how such a gin was made, how many steps and love it took before it could be bottled and sold. And that it is absolutely forbidden for children. I listened and was amazed that juniper berries were obviously a very important ingredient not only for the delicious heather bread, but also for this gin. But then the purpose of our trip came back to me. So I decided to ask this kind heathen man about our place with the bench. Grandpa pulled the photo out of his backpack. I showed the pig and told the gin man our destination. And for a brief moment I thought he would know the place. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case this time either. When the friendly gentleman noticed my disappointment, he gave me a glass with juniper berries as a small consolation. We said goodbye and continued on our way through the purple land. My longing to find the place with the bench increased with every step we took. Grandpa had encouraged me that there was still so much to discover and we would definitely be sitting on that bench at the end of the day. His caring words cheered me up and so we wandered on and on and didn't give up. As if out of nowhere, bleeding and incredibly fluffy sheep suddenly appeared in front of us. I was amazed and so excited. Sheep, Grandpa, look, so many. They are so-called Heidschnucken. That's a special sheep breed in the heath, said Grandpa. It was a huge flock of these Heidschnucken, which passed right by us with a lot of meh. Shortly thereafter, the shepherd of the flock appeared and gave us a warm wave. He talked about his farm, where he lived with his family and the almost 850 Schnucken. The shepherd and his dogs stayed with us for a while and he explained his work with those fluffy animals to us. How connected he felt to the flock in such a way that he knew each of his animals and its needs very well. He described how a pastry day works and that the Heidschnucken are animal landscapers who keep the heather bushes in good shape by their grazing. His love for what he did was written all over his face. Such a great job, always outside, under the sky with fresh air, surrounded by such cuddly animals. I could also imagine becoming a Heidschnucken shepherdess. Grandpa took the opportunity and asked the shepherd about our place with the bench, but he too didn't know it. This time I felt the impatience heavily in my stomach. The shepherd smiled suddenly pulled two small cushions woven from thick wool from his pocket and handed them to us. Take these with you. They were made from the wool of my schnucken. It's much more comfortable for you to sit on when you take a break, he said with a smile. Oh, what a great extraordinary gift. I held my wool cushion tight as we said goodbye to the shepherd.
On our way, we came to a lookout point that offered a breathtakingly beautiful view of the rolling hills of this part of the heathland. As we arrived, we spotted this photographer on the path. He held a huge camera in his hands and looked very content somehow. Apparently, he had shot some nice photos. So Grandpa stopped and started a conversation with him. And? Are you happy with the scenery of your pictures? Grandpa asked the man. He smiled proudly and stepped closer to us. Then he showed us the most impressive landscape shots I had ever seen. Wow, that was stunning. The photographer was delighted by the enthusiasm we displayed looking at his pictures. Then Grandpa had an idea and we showed him the picture of the place with a bench. Of course, a photographer had to know exactly where this bench was. After all, it was also a photographer who once discovered the glowing poster motive at the bus stop. But he didn't know the place either. But if you can't find the bench, look around. There are so many beautiful places here. So don't be sad, the photographer said. I understood what he said. Nevertheless, I suddenly felt so discouraged. Listen very carefully. Do you hear the babbling of the brook telling us a story? Grandpa asked with a wink. I closed my eyes and actually heard it. The soft brook water splashing over small stones and the sunlight really seemed to tell us something. We took a little break on a bench next to the bridge when we heard an exciting sound, the clatter of wheels and hooves. And indeed, on the other side of the little stream, a carriage rolled in our direction. I heard the driver's whistle as the carriage drove over the small bridge and only a few moments later, it stopped next to us. Together with the two pretty horses in front, and a fluffy dog, plus a friendly laughing woman in it. And I could hardly believe our luck. She called out to us. Well, would you like to join me for a ride? I've just dropped off my last passengers. Get on if you want. Wow, I had never experienced anything like that. A real carriage ride. Britta, that was the name of the coach woman, introduced us to her animals. The cuddly dog was called Motta, the two horses Fred and Maya. She told us about the exciting adventures that she experienced on a daily basis with Fred, Maya and Motta and showed us particularly beautiful areas during the trip. Those were such great stories about the Lüneburg Keys. At some point, Britta stopped the carriage, turned to us and said, Unfortunately, I have to let you out here. Grandpa came up with the idea of asking her, who undoubtedly knew her way around the heath, if she knew our place with the bench.
I slumped in my seat in disappointment. My hope crumbled. Not even a coach woman knew our longing place. Did it even exist? Or was it all just a nice dream? It was already afternoon. How were we supposed to find our bench in the little time we had left on this day? Suddenly, Britta pulled something out of her pocket. She had noticed my disappointment and cheered me up with one of the nicest gifts I've ever received. That is a real horseshoe. One that will bring you true luck, Britta explained to me. And because you now have such a lucky charm with you, you will find your place with the bench. I know that. I felt the heaviness of the iron and at the same time a wave of new confidence come up in me. Because, oh wow, now I had, so to speak, tangible luck with me. And as rattling as the carriage had met us at first, it drove away again. Place with bench or not, Grandpa and I were hungry. We had been here for so long that it was time for a lavish picnic. And so we went on, until we found an idyllic meadow next to an old sheep barn that seemed made for a good picnic. Grandpa told me a few more stories from the time when he discovered the heath as a child and how happy he was to be here with me. I thought of the many beautiful moments we had experienced today, of all the heath people we met and who shared so many interesting things with us. Disappointment and sadness also mingled with my feelings. It was such a shame we didn't find our place with a bench. But while I was sitting there listening to Grandpa, it was as if my inner view suddenly changed. I saw how enthusiastically he talked and made me laugh again and again. And I realized that it was him who never gave up or lost confidence. who always encouraged me and believed in me. I suddenly felt something that seemed to overwhelm all other feelings like a wave. The love for Grandpa and the bond between us that seemed to have multiplied in its intensity during this special day. I was so grateful to have experienced this time with Grandpa. All the frustration and sadness suddenly dissolved and made way for this warm and cozy feeling. And then a little miracle happened.
There it was, the place with the bench, our place of longing. And I realized it was much more important to set off for this adventure together than finding this place. The path itself was the purpose. This path, the journey through the purple land, had given us something that was so much bigger, more beautiful and more powerful than any place in this world alone could ever be. An inseparable Genian connection. Today, I'm a mom myself. Like my grandpa did for me, this adventure of life will now be passed on by me. And I hope one day also by my daughter to her children, so that it travels from generation to generation and reminds us how breathtakingly beautiful, wonderful, and sometimes even bright purple, like blooming heath, life is when we discover it together with childlike senses. How precious it is to live. Therefore, remember, remember, remember.